Hey everybody, it's Margaret and Bethany. Happy Thanksgiving to all of our. No, no. Uh, hi, all of our U.S. people, and happy Thanksgiving to you, Bethany Long. I am grateful for you. Oh no, I'm grateful for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is welcome. <laughs> This is our second show where we get to be together because we're super grateful for each other um, and talk about um, women and our voices and our power. And of course, we've just had Thanksgiving. So we have some great topics lined up around that, around we as women um, have different roles around holidays, often with family. And we're going to talk about that a little bit today. Bethany has some thoughts on that. Um, and maybe a little bit about how our thanks, how was your Thanksgiving? Tell everybody how your Thanksgiving was and then I'll share Fine. mine. Great. And it's still <laughs> continuing. My in-laws are here and I have them vanquished into a, a, another room. <laughs> um, they're eating their snacks together and um, they've been here for a week, a couple more days left. So um, mm -hmm. they're still here. But we had a lovely Thanksgiving, just low key. My mom hosted. It was super fun. You know, it's just good times. Bringing family together yes. and for weeks on end. I mean, it was known to you. They're lovely people. <laughs> well, you know, you it just vanquishing them to another room is such a great expression because when we women work from home, um, we often have to really set really strong boundaries because we're not often in office. Um, and we are also expected often to multitask a lot more because we are home. Now, I love throwing on laundry when yes. I'm at home, but when I have family showing up, it, they, there's not often that same like understanding. I can't tell you, you know how many calls I've been on live with people or recorded things, and my parents yes. just had coming through the door. Yes. Um, we were on live stream once, and I was like, in the middle of my living room with the whole camera. And I was like, yeah. just letting you know, my parents could yeah. literally be knocking at the door. They don't call ahead. They don't use text. Yes. Um, and so I've been on calls like this on videos like this. Some of the webinars that we've been on because the door opens and I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm, and I'm, I'm talking, of course. I'm like, so anyway, yeah. I'm like, I don't know if you put my arm. I'm like, please. Yeah. So yes, that's maybe that's cool. our first tip of the show is when you are working from home, you use the mute button. Um, I like to use my handset and a headphone so I can be holding it. Otherwise, if you're on your cell phone like this, I can hit the mute. I can hit the mute button while the other person's talking and go, go away, I'm on a call. <laughs> or I can say, let's all just take a deep breath and go within and just and just I just want you to sit with this for a minute. Click. <laughs> <laughs> you run, open the door. Really, this is the day you have to check my water meter? Yes, ma'am. They're banging. Uh, so, yeah, that's the, the mute button comes in really handy when you're working at home and you have to set stronger boundaries because your job does matter. It is important, even if it's not off the ground yet. Um, yes, so I'm yeah. going to... I'm going to tell you a fantastic fifth chakra opening story from my Thanksgiving. Um, I had had a discussion the day before Thanksgiving with one of the uncles. I'm just going to say uncles who was at the party and um, he doesn't know much about chakras and stuff, but we were talking about, you know, always having to be perfect and say everything perfect and never make a mistake, which is a real fifth chakra issue for him. So on Thanksgiving, we're we've got grandmother we've got three kids under the age of 13 we've got one teenager thank god my daughter wasn't there yet and a lot of adults and um this uncle is at the head of the table talking about the football game that we're going to be playing and starts reminiscing about years past when we've all played the th the day after thanksgiving touch football game um, and starts to explain to the children that there is a term in football when you pretend to go one direction and you switch to the other direction. Do you know what that term is called, Bethany? Yeah, I do, but I can't think of it. I mean, I've heard mm -hmm. it, yes. He said it's when you juke somebody, right? And so oh, you, I don't know it's that way. Juke, okay. It's a Jersey thing, right? So you, you know, and we, I always knew that like when you trick somebody, right? So you juke yeah. this way and you juke that way. Yeah. He uses the word jizz. Oh, wow. has no idea that he's using the word jizz. And he oh. continues the story saying, so I'm jizzing this way and I'm jizzing <laughs> that way. And you know, jizzing is when you pretend to go one way and I'm standing out on the edge going, <laughs> and I, I, I look at some of the other siblings and they're like, and of course yeah. there's grandma who's like, mm -hmm. And three young children under the age of 13, like, mm-hmm, 
Uh, and he's talking about jizzing down the field and I'm looking <laughs> so I finally take two steps in and this is a person who never ever says the wrong thing they are uh, so careful so somehow fifth chakra opened I take two steps in and I go <laughs> are you sure that's the right word that you want to be using. And all of a sudden you see, and the one, uh, so now we've got a 17 year old niece. She just starts dying, hysterical, hysterical, hysterically laughing. And the brother, you know, all the other adults, you know, the, the, it breaks, everyone's laughing. Now you have grandma and three children like, what, what, what? They have no idea why it's so funny, um, but of course, my, the the seventeen year old in the room thinks it's hysterical, and she's like, "Yeah, jizzing, jizzing. You were the jizz man. You were the jizz man that year." Now all the children are chanting, "Jizz man." Jizz man. <laughs> is on her way, and she's twenty. And I'm like, "How am I going to get on the phone with her to explain to her when she gets here? All of the children are going to be calling this uncle jizz man." So for the next four days. <laughs> I, we have a grandmother and three young children who are using the term jizz all <laughs> over Thanksgiving. <laughs> and my oh, that's daughter that's is cool. like, my daughter comes in as a voice of reason and goes, why don't you just tell the children it means a bad word so they stop saying it? Or at least your grandmother, nope. My, our 17 year was like, this is the greatest. We're gonna keep this going. Oh, there's the new nickname. Even in the thank you notes we hosted, there was um, a little a person drawn with a t-shirt that said jizz man. I mean, it was. Oh, wow. This is it, it's sticking, it's sticking. <laughs> so when you open your fifth chakra, expect big things, That's expect right. harmless mistakes, <laughs> Expect funny moments that are going to follow you forever and ever. So that was my Thanksgiving story. Um, but let's talk a little bit seriously about <laughs> things, everybody. Uh, Good stuff. Fifth chakra. Yeah. This is let's just open that fifth chakra. Talking about jizz on Thanksgiving. Uh -huh. Yeah, jizzing everywhere on Thanksgiving. Um, <laughs> Oh. Away from that, very challenging, very challenging. <laughs> Can we tell you about that? Yeah, so <laughs> from jizzing on Thanksgiving to talk about multitasking because you saw a really cool TED Talk. I want to hear about it. Yeah, I saw a really cool TED Talk. And you're like, how does this all relate? But it does. Mm -hmm. You'll see it, you'll hear it. Um, it actually doesn't. But um, we are, uh, I saw a really great TED Talk and it was all about multitasking. But it was really about boredom. And what she was saying, which I, and of course I was like, this is so riveting. Cause I feel like I've been, I've amped up my multitasking to like a thousand, you know, a thousand fold lately. And uh, I'm like, oh. you have a four year old. Don't, not sure. If yeah, that's you know, I've got a four year old, my family out here, finally cleaning up in the hurricane. Like, we're just trying to get as much done as we can. Yeah. And um, things in the background, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's just so much happening. I'm just like pretty proud of myself. Well, that, and we all know multitasking, you know, that's not how our brain works and it's not the most effective way to do things. But this struck me because she was mentioning that the other side of multitasking is like boredom and we're all afraid to be bored. We're grabbing mm. our phones mm. and having to be on like every five seconds. And she gave some crazy stat, like we're on our, you know, where our brain is switching over when we multitask. Like before it was like at 70 times and now it's like two, three, 400 times, like for yeah. whatever it was. It's so crazy. It's just exponentially because of all the things we can grab. But what it does, what the, the multitasking does, and when we're not in that boredom place where we're just like sitting and just dreaming and daydreaming, is it's robbing us. And it's robbing us of creativity, of the aha moments, of the synthesis, of all the, um, everything that we've taken in. The synthesis happens in the boredom spaces. And so when we look at us as women and you know, women leaders, and we're doing so much with our businesses, with our life, with our companies, with our families, whatever you're doing, we're constantly having to multitask. And now we bring into the, you know, holidays and like we're, you know, multitasking on steroids. And the, and the thing about, you know, and Margaret, I know, you know, like us women, like our creativity, that part of us, that passion and creativity, like that's our strength. 
Yeah. That's our story. It's one of our beautiful, you know, diamonds that, you know, we're squashing every time we're sort of like in this crazy, like multitasking space. Yeah. yeah. I know you have to say about that. Yeah. I mean, you know, my friend, we've talked about this a lot this year. A friend of mine is a big proponent of using the word percolate. Um, yeah. And so that the, the best to really to have a creative moment or an insight or even an idea or even um, like, oh, I have this overwhelming thing that I have to do, no matter what the creative process is or where you are in it, that this idea of you're not doing nothing. You want to actually carve out time to percolate so that the idea has time to go in the background, whether you're out walking or playing with the kids or doing something else that this is actually conscious percolate time. And of course, like I, th when I, when you're talking about it, I'm thinking about how people talk about meditation. I should meditate, I should meditate. When I do meditate, I'm actually more efficient. Um, and it just quiets everything down. Um, you know, I think that when I think about multitasking, there is a lot of pride associated with it, right? Because it feels so good when you, there's a level of multitasking that we have learned to do well, right? It's just like if, if you went in the military, you would learn how to do all the different tasks in the military, you know, put your gun together and, and get everything, like whatever your job was, you would learn how to do it and then be an expert at it. And I feel like we, particularly women, have ha whether we're natural multitaskers or not, have had to learn that strength. And when we don't do it well, there's a lot of criticism, right? So if, if you drop a ball, there's a lot of criticism. But there is a really good feeling when you're in that sweet spot. And what I've realized about the sweet spot is that you can do it for a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. You can do it for a certain amount of complexity for a short, the more complex it is, the shorter amount of time I can handle. Um, but there is a price to pay, right? So mm -hmm. at a low level, I can multitask if there's a lot of space. I can have the laundry going and a chicken in the oven while I'm also working because it, there's some ease in there of just being like, well, now I have you know an hour before I do the next thing. But if you have to do more in focus and have way more balls in the air, which we do when we have our own business, um, there's a price to pay and when we keep multitasking. And I find that, it's, that it often is a shock to our partner when suddenly we blow because that's the price. It's being a bitch. Eventually, you are going to sound like a bitch because wow. you've been asking too long, right? You become a machine. You're like, yeah. and it's like a stuck, right? And then we feel bad. Yeah. yeah. Um, so a partner doesn't see it coming. They're like, whoa, right? And we feel really bad. Like, why are we bitching at everybody? And um, then we feel like, you know, like I'm a people pleaser. Or so we, we just start getting really hard on ourselves. But what if we can go into multitasking saying, okay, I can do this. And when it becomes overwhelming, you know, like when you have um, all of a sudden a family, you know, like a, we all have elder care issues, right? A family issues happens or a child gets sick or some other stressor falls into the system that now you have to deal with. I can do this and I can soldier through and manage it, but there is a price to pay. And eventually I am gonna bitch out. I am gonna feel angry. I'm gonna feel pissed. I'm gonna feel, and then I'm gonna judge myself for all that shit. What if we could just not judge ourselves, mm -hmm. right? What if we could say at the end of this couple of days, I'm gonna be overwrought, really pissy and really frustrated and I'm going to be like massively using energy to contain that in myself. Like what if we could just own that? Because it does happen sometimes. Like what's the value to, to naming it and knowing it? And to me, it's that we just don't judge ourselves as much. You know, mm -hmm. um, we might still be a bitch, but at least our partners are coming because we told them in advance, this is going to take a toll on me. Uh -huh. right? Yes, yes, yes. So when you watch the TED Talk, though, what what's some of the other price that we pay, you know, besides like we can muscle through and do it, just remember you're going to be a bitch and just get it, own it. What's the other price that we pay for, I, I guess I'm thinking of like for our goals and our passion and what we want to get done when we're multitasking too much? Yeah, and it really is. It, it's that it's that that flow and creativity, which is who we are, you know, inherently as women. It's that piece, which like who cares? We're not creative or whatever, but that is the juice and the passion that really pumps through us. And that 
you know, 100% gets stifled, and then we're just a machine, which is not fun, which is why we're so angry, which makes us bitchy. And then when there's no, when the create when the the information is so much, as you know, information coming in, it, the way it's connecting, the way it's like, you know, um, we're, we're trying to take it all in, again, as we're multitasking. And there's, yeah. there's also no chance for that to assimilate. So you're looking for that next thing that you want to do, or you're looking for, like, some peace. <laughs> and yeah. we're always looking for something. Like, what is it? What is it? In that gap, in that space is where... The, the juice can start to flow and the ideas can percolate and then there's more fun there's more like rejuvenation happening but we just cut like all of that out so that's that is really where we lose and especially that that major strength that we have gets which isn't necessarily valued interestingly enough um, yeah. in our society as women as leaders that ability to be creative to be flowy to be able to move multi-dimensionally like that is not necessarily valued as much um potentially yeah. there was another Forbes article I was reading I thought well that's pretty fascinating like all the, a lot of the traits that we have are not necessarily valued so they're not you know not seen yes. so we're like well who cares about creativity when it is your lifeblood and it's flowing and it's juicy yeah. like you can lead teams you can you know I mean like there's just so much you're like yeah we're gonna do this now and then all of a sudden like magic is happening and everything flows more smoothly and it's more fun when right. we're in that flow state well what I, I guess what I'm thinking is maybe what we can um, have everybody do right now as a as like a real action is just mm -hmm. is to make a commitment that you're going to get really clear on where your line is in multitasking so so first you know to me it's always so powerful just to have the awareness just to have the aha moment just to take the next three days as yeah. like an experimental time and observe like how much do I multitask um, or how much pressure do I put on myself to multitask, which leaves me overwhelmed, right? Because we either get overwhelmed and get into frenetic energy or we're multitasking and we're in scattered frenetic energy. So where is my line? Because there's some level of it that feels okay, that feels good. And what I've been switching to since this conversation about percolate yeah. is what is that one thing if you're in your work day and you're working your passion and you're doing creative work and there's stuff that you can get done that you need to get done what's the one multitasking thing that you can do that actually feeds you because it allows you percolation time right it allows you meditation time strangely for me um it can that can be like taking the clothes out of the dryer and now spending 15 yes. minutes folding yes. it away clothes yes. and I'm in this quiet space. Um, maybe I'll play like a, 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 a success. I am, I am success meditation, right? Yes. And then I go back to work and that feels like it fed me. I was doing sort of mindless, busy work, but it wasn't stressful, right? Yes. So, so identify like, where is your line where too much is all gonna overwhelm you? Um, too much pressure and then what what is that one multitasking or two multitasking things that you can do that actually creates percolation space that isn't doesn't add a lot of stress i mean for some people that's cooking for some people you know a hundredth on the list would be cooking right yeah. um, it's and not that's like yeah uh, we're, we're talking about domestic things because a lot of us work from home right. yeah and it's not and, and then you're at home and you're in your office and it's not filling in the gaps yeah. right so yeah. I, I thought so for me it's really putting this down. Like I'll, I'll run and like I'm going to check something or I am going to listen to something that's, you know, feeding me, but it's also, you know, it, I, I stopped myself. I said, wait, just be in this, this gap. Dylan was taking a shower. I said, just sit on the floor. Yeah. Just sit on the floor <laughs> and like stare. And I just was like, well, what's that like? You know, normally I'm like, let me just see what's happening. <laughs> right. Get on my email or check something, you know? And I was like, wait, be in that gap, be in that space yeah. instead of, you know, being in that sort of multitasking kind of, you know, place. So we can fill ourselves up and, and allow things to settle. And we yeah. get more brilliant, more smart as everything's starting to connect, which is what we're really good at. Well. Yeah, and we'd love to hear from you guys. So tell us what yeah. yours are. What, are. what are the things that you can do that actually feed your percolation time, that are quiet, that are spacious, even if they're doing something um, that you can feel Why? good about, but actually feeds your time, yeah. 
Yeah. They're like boring. So think about what's boring. <laughs> like yeah. we don't even have to be like we're so afraid of being bored now. And, and, you know, they say, and it's so true that we get our best ideas in the shower or when we're out walking, right? And so when you're doing something that is maybe mindless and rote, but is quiet and meditative, that is perfect percolation time. Um, and think about taking a walk that is as actually multitasking, right? So I'm actually walking because it's percolation. I'm opening my mind. Um, we all could take a few walks after Thanksgiving. Um, that's what I'm going to try to do today. I did pull my hamstring, so I'm going to be limp. We're going to be walking a little slow. Any last thoughts? Because our show's about to go right off the air. I know. I love you guys. I know. Tell us what you do. We'll, we'll meet them next time. Come back and see us next Monday. We'll talk about what you guys commented here today, what your favorite multitasking things are. And we'll be back next Monday to talk about your power and your voice in no off-color stories, I promise, next time, unless you want more. We have more. <laughs> Bye, guys. Happy Thanksgiving.